For the latest now on the battle for Speaker of the House, we're joined now by Republican Congressman Matt Rosendale of Montana. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, you've backed Congressman Jim Jordan, but at this point, can you see any scenario where he's able to get the votes he needs? I do. Uh, Jim had 200 votes yesterday. He did lose one vote today. He's 199. But I think that he is having conversations with the 23 folks that uh, did not vote for him. I won't even call them uh, opposers, uh, you know, opponents. Um, I think that they just have different issues that they needed to work through. It's a very uh, tense time for us. Tempers have been hot over the last couple of weeks, and I, I really haven't heard anyone express any real major divide that was keeping them from, from voting for Jim Jordan. I myself have, have worked with him for several years now and seen him as a very strong leader, and I think that he will do a fine job as our next Speaker of the House. Uh, wasn't there a concern as far as him being an election denier? I thought that that was, in fact, a problem from some uh, of the Republicans who were saying that, look, you know, you really have to admit that, that Trump lost the election in order for us to uh, give us your support. I think that there's a lot of people that uh, voted against the electors, myself being one of them, because we had numerous credible allegations of a uh, fraud that took place in some of these states and wanted to see that information um, aired out and, and those measures checked into. And quite frankly, they never were. But I, I think that the, uh, again, what you see from Jim Jordan is a true leader that has gone about the business of the people's work here in Washington, D.C., exposing a lot of, of uh, fraud, a lot of, of corruption, and uh, a lot of problems. But you're not hearing any concern from your colleagues that to this day, Jim Jordan will not concede that Trump lost the election? I, I, again, what I hear from the people that have voted against Jim is that they're just basically still mad at the, uh, the process that has taken place over the last uh, 10 days. Uh, unfortunately, Kevin McCarthy did need to be replaced. He had lost the trust and confidence of the House of Representatives. If that wasn't so, Jim wouldn't have gotten 200 votes yesterday. Okay, he wouldn't have gotten 199 votes today. Uh, Jim Jordan is the second most popular Republican in the country behind well, only I don't Donald know. Let Trump. me just push back for a second, Congressman, because I think that what we've been hearing, at least as a number of your colleagues, are simply saying, look, for the betterment of the country, we're going to hold our nose and, and vote so that we can all come together and give the aid potentially that we need for Israel, for Ukraine, and get the business of the country moving again. Yeah, Lindsay, I, we've heard that from a lot of voters in a lot of states across this entire nation. But what I will tell you is they've done it not just once, but twice now. And what they're trying to do is, is just to find out what exactly are the concerns that the uh, remaining uh, individuals have. It's 23. He needs 17 of those members to, to go ahead and, and have that discussion with him. And I think that it'll happen. So if you end up continuing to go in the wrong direction in the next few rounds of votes. Is there another Republican out there who you think that, that more members could get on board with? I don't, because if there was, Lindsay, they would have been nominated, and the, uh, the House of Representatives would have rallied around that individual. This is not a, a closed process. Anyone can actually go down to the floor and nominate someone else. Uh, would you support at all the idea of giving more power to the temporary speaker, Congressman Patrick McHenry, so that the House can get back to work, just even on a short-term basis? No, I think that that would be a very big mistake. Uh, he was not elected by the conference. That was an appointment that was made. And you do not turn additional special powers and privileges over to someone that was just an appointment. I think it would be a very, very dangerous precedent. And I think it'd be the wrong thing to do. So last question for you, Congressman, and this is really, again, in a plan B. If you got to break the glass because all else fails emergency scenario, would you welcome Democratic support if that's what it took to get consensus on a speaker that both sides could live with? We already saw the Democrats break the glass and pull the fire alarm a couple of weeks ago when they were trying to uh, delay actions on the House floor, and that never works out well. I think that we've got a, a nominee. He's an extremely strong candidate, and we need to take the time for uh, that's necessary for him to resolve any of the issues that some of these outstanding um, members have so that we can get Jim Jordan elected as Speaker of the House. Congressman Matt Rosendale of Montana, certainly appreciate your time tonight.
Thank you, Lindsay. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.